So um, first of all, I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Farm, for giving me the floor. Eric Lindstrom, thank you so much. I appreciate it to always talk about cruelty-free design and how we can take care of removing chemicals from our spaces to keep ourselves happy and healthy and to protect all living beings. So thank you so much. So in this webinar, I'm going to hopefully instill a couple tools for you guys on what to look for and what to avoid when designing your space whether it be a bedroom or whether it be a, a uh, office or whether it be um, a hospitality area or a child's room, especially a child's room. So we're just going to go through some things. I'm also going to try to give you a little bit of education about animal-based materials as well and why they aren't good for you. So I'm also going to be looking at my handy dandy sheets because unfortunately I do not have a photographic memory, so I need my notes. Um, so when I decorate a space, for me, it's really such a privilege and an honor to decorate someone's space because I believe that I am, I have the ability by designing their space to help that person or that family mentally and physically in a positive way. And that also transcends into helping laborers, children, animals, all living beings and the planet because the decisions that I take in that space, the furniture and the decor that I pick has an impact on everyone. We're all connected. So my purchase of something is very important. And I always say, every nickel you spend has such power. So I hope that also, that is the message here when you finish this webinar with me, that you understand that you can make change with your purchases and your furniture and decor. So when I decorate a space, um, it's not just about the pretty furniture because that's an easy thing to do. You know, it's easy to make a pretty space, but it goes a lot deeper. It has to work for the person mentally and physically, and it has to have good energy. I don't want any blood or tragedy in my spaces. So how did I become a vegan designer, a cruelty-free designer? I'll just give you a very brief background. Um, I am self-taught. I've been designing now nearly 20 years. And it really just started as a hobby when my children who were very young then went to school and I was looking for part-time work. I decorated my friend's home as a favor and it turned into a full-time career, which has been wonderful. And I feel very blessed. I've had projects really all over the world. I've been doing this now for quite a while. I've had wonderful experiences. I've learned a lot. I've made tons of mistakes to this day because I'm not formally trained there's still certain technical things that I don't know, but fortunately I have people that work with me to help me fill those gaps. Um, and how did I become and why did I become a cruelty-free designer and not focused on, on incorporating animal-based products into my projects? Well, I'm an animal lover. My family, we love animals and our life really revolves around our pets. As you can see in this picture, that's our dog, Luca, who, if you follow us on social media, he's a star. And, um, I guess you always have to be ready. I say you must be ready for change because once you see the dark side, I think it's very, very hard to go back and you have to be able to address it, embrace it and make a decision. And I'm always getting videos on my fees for animal rights because I'm involved with many organizations. And this one, hold on, came up on my feet. And this is a picture of dogs um, in China. And the article was about dog leather and dog leather exists. Um, leather comes from China and leather can be anything with a skin. It can be kangaroos. It can be seals, cats, dogs, raccoon dogs, anything. And in China, they also eat dogs. We eat cows here, they eat dogs. And when I saw this horrific video on what they do to these poor animals, I was in shock. But then I say, why was I in shock? If, it's an animal. What's the difference between a dog and a cow? They're two beautiful beings. So that really seeing that video, it just did something to me and it propelled me into transitioning my business to be completely vegan and non-animal based. Um, and from that, um, my company, Damari Design, let me move my face here. It's in the way. My company, Damari Design, um, became completely vegan. And what happened was um, 
consumers and designers started um, reaching out to me. They wanted to know more about fabrics and options and alternatives that weren't harming animals. So vegandesign.org was created, which became, now it's an educational platform. We have lots of courses, well, two courses, and we're, at, we're adding more. We have a shop, and it's really like a, a place for people to learn all about cruelty-free design. And I realized I love educating people. This for me is the biggest pleasure in the world, just to be able to teach people what I have already learned and it's taken so long to learn. So those are the two businesses that I have that started all from me just wanting to go vegan in my business. So um, what happened was when I became vegan in my business, I thought I was really just doing it for animals. And what I realized was that I had entered a rabbit hole because it wasn't just about animals. It was about laborers, as I mentioned, and children, workers, the planet. It was about health. It was all tied to chemicals and toxins. And that's what I started to learn. And as I said, it was entering a rabbit hole because I had just hit the tip of the iceberg of the deterioration and despicability, if that's a word, of the industry. 1 billion animals are killed yearly for the skins and hides industry. And not only is it atrocious and unnecessary, but it is also destroying the planet because of all the chemicals that are used to treat these skins. So um, my mission really is that I believe that my, I would like to educate people to let them know that they don't have to sacrifice beauty they don't have to sacrifice animals or workers to have beautiful furniture and decor. And that is really what I focus on in my projects and, and in these kinds of webinars. So let's get started. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tools. But first, let's just define vegan design, you know, just a little information here. Vegan design focuses on environments to promote good health and well-being while respecting and honoring animals, humanity, and the planet. Vegan design can be used for residential, commercial, and hospitality, meaning hotels, with products that don't originate from any living creature, are not an animal byproduct, and not tested on animals. We don't use wool, fur, leather, skin, silk, down feathers, reptile skin, fish bones, or any other animal-derived materials. They are not welcome in vegan design. Materials and fabrics used that we use do not contain harm, torture, or exploit any conscious living being. Vegan spaces are free from tragedy and toxins. And those are my adorable children with our dog. Okay. So let's start with common chemicals that are found in our home. Um, many of us don't realize what our furniture and decor contains. There are so many hidden poisons within these. Now, this is a quick module. It's about three minutes um, from actually our new course. It's a vegan and non-toxic nursery and kids course, a design course. And I think this is really good to show because it's quick, it's brief, and it gives you an idea of what to avoid. Many of us can't even begin to imagine the dangers that are lurking in most furniture and decor. We are in a chemical revolution. Up to 30% of a fabric's weight can be from chemicals. How insane is that? There are over 8,000 toxic chemicals that are legal to use in textiles. Here's 10 chemicals that are in fabrics, mattresses, paint, rugs, and furniture. PBDE flame retardants. A recent study found these chemicals are the greatest contributor to intellectual disabilities in children. PFAS is in almost everything including upholstery, where it's used to protect the fabric. It's called the forever chemical. A recent study found PFAS was detected in the blood of 97% of Americans. Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a colorless chemical with a strong odor that is commonly found in pressed wood products and furniture, glues, adhesive, plywood fabrics, and product coatings, including wrinkle-free sheets. Azo dyes. This dye is commonly used in the textile industry. It's highly toxic and carcinogenic. Chlorine, used in the process of cleaning wool. Pesticides, used to keep <clears throat> animal-derived materials free from insects. Phthalates, which are a class of chemicals used in nearly every consumer product, from plastics to tablecloths. As for furniture, they can be found in floor tiles, furniture, upholstery, and carpet backings. More than 400 170 million pounds of phthalates are produced or imported in the U.S. every year. 
arsenic, a deadly chemical found in leather and other products. Animal skins are transformed into leather hides and tanneries. Tanneries are one of the most toxic industries globally and account for more pollution than automobiles. The average tannery worker in India dies at the age of 55. Chromium, a lethal chemical also used in the tanning process of leather. It's not only the consumer who is exposed to the toxic chemicals, all living beings suffer, human and non. Laborers who work in animal-related textile industries like down, sheep and fur farms, or in tanneries live a horrible existence. There are very little regulations for these workers. They are poor, starving, and desperate. They expose themselves to poisons, disease, mental illness, injuries, and death in order to feed their families. The conditions that the animals endure raised on these farms is indescribable. They are tortured, starved, beaten, and eventually, after being abused for their skin, feathers, or fur, killed in the most despicable, unimaginable ways. Many left to die a slow, torturous death. It's the most horrific life one could imagine. It's impossible to treat an animal humanely when that animal is considered an object for profit only and not as a living, breathing, intelligent being that can feel pain, fright, hunger, and seek to protect its young. Okay, I think that's informative now. Okay, notice I like black turtlenecks, by the way, easy. Um, so, Speaking about fabrics, let's speak about fabrics for a bit. The top five most environmentally damaging materials are in the following order. Leather, which is the worst. Silk, cotton, bast fibers, and wool. Bast fibers are like sack, potato sack. You know, I used to think before I became knowledgeable about this stuff, that, oh, potato sacks, they're so natural. They're so organic looking. No, they're extremely toxic and they're, they're so damaging to the world. Chemicals within fabrics, just so you know, are linked to cancer, autism, kidney failure, hormone disruptors, infertility, decreased sperm count, mental impairment, behavioral issues, and fetal malformations. By the way, that's only a partial list because that's a whole nother webinar. The chemicals in these fabrics are washed into rivers, lakes, streams, and oceans, destroying wildlife, people, and the planet. So as I said, when I first started thinking that I was just going to go cruelty-free in my design, I didn't understand that for every action, there is a reaction. And clearly that is a very big case in point when it comes to animal-based materials. They just destroy everything around them because of all the chemicals that, are, that are, have to be soaked and laden in these fabrics. So these are some non-vegan materials, which I'm sure most of us know of, but I just wanted to mention them. Wool, sheepskin, goatskin, leather, suede, fur, down feathers, silk, horns and tusks. Yes, they still are making things with horns and tusks. Beeswax, certain glues and paints, and cowhide. There are many more, but these are just a few of the biggies. So let's talk a little bit more about leather. Um, leather is one of the most toxic pollutants in the world. It's more toxic than cars. And the animal materials industry to me is truly archaic. The process of turning part of an animal into a useful material is long and it's efficient. It's archaic. The production of leather can take up to two years and requires significant energy and land and manpower and money. And another note about leather, you know, um, 75 years under the ocean in the water, uh, the Titanic was in the water for 75 years before they discovered it. And do you know that leather was the leather furnishings were completely intact for 75 years, they were in the water and they were completely fine. That just shows you how many chemicals are soaked in leather. I always found that fact really interesting. There are about 250 chemicals in the tanning process of leather, and they include chromium, cobalt, cyanide, lead, and mercury. Just a few of them. There's 250. Now, I used to design spaces for children. I love designing spaces for children, and I would always put leather bean bags in there. And I look back, I say, what was I crazy? I was literally surrounding children who are part of the fragile population because they are smaller. So they are fragile, just as seniors are also part of the fragile population because they're not as strong as we are. And there I was surrounding them in leather bean bags. Our skin is porous. We absorb everything. We're like a sponge. So Education is power. 
And these are some vegan alternatives. Um, tensil, which is um, made from bamboo. You also have bamboo. You have cotton, linen, cork, hemp, sisal, rubber, which is also called kapok, and canvas. These are just a few of them. And then, of course, there are the faux materials. Um, we go back and forth with faux. You know, people say, well, aren't the faux materials, the faux leathers, just as toxic because many of them are petroleum based? And, you know, I've read many studies and it still shows that even uh, a faux leather or a nylon is less destructive on the planet and people and animals than the alternatives. Okay. Let's talk about, hold on, let me check my notes here. Certifications. Okay. So you want to do a room. Let's say you want to do your bedroom. How do you know what sheets to buy? How do you know what mattress to buy? How do you know what headboard to buy? So there's a couple things that you should look for. And there are certifications. And we have our favorites that we use, that we love. We have GOTS certified materials and fabrics and products, mostly materials. GOTS stands for the Global Organic Textile Standard. GOTS certified fabrics forbid the use of harmful pesticides, toxic materials, and chlorine bleach. bleach. GOTS certified fabrics for us are like the granddaddy. They're the Cadillac of the fabrics. Whenever we start a project, the first thing we want to do is see if it's GOTS certified, if we can find GOTS certified materials, because they're clean. Um, and what's also great about GOTS is that they're fair trade certified. Fair trade is about better prices, decent working conditions, local sustainability, and fair terms of trade for farmers and workers in the developing world. The working conditions are cleaner, less toxic for laborers and surrounding marine and wildlife villages. So the cleaner a product is, the less it's going to destroy the area around it. So vegan, GOTS, and fair, fair trade certified materials and products are ethically ideal and healthier. So those are, you can look for GOTS certified, vegan, and fair trade. One thing I want to mention, when something is vegan, it might not be cruelty-free. Two different things. Cruelty-free means that it's not tested on animals. So be aware and, and educate yourself and go another layer when you're buying things. Ask, get information, go on Google, email us. We always love to help because a product can be vegan, but yet it might not be cruelty-free because it still might have been tested on animals and we don't want that. Um, let me see. We are going to know. Oh, okay. We have uh, got certified. Okay. After got certified, we have Okatex certified. Okatex certification is also very good. It's not as strict as GOTS, but it's still better than no certifications. It's still um, it's still reducing the amount of chemicals that in something that doesn't have any kind of certification. Another one that you want to look for is FSC certification, which stands for the Forest Stewardship Council. Uh, I can never say that without like losing it, but I actually said it. I'm proud of myself. And it ensures that the products come from ethically responsible and sourced um, forests. They're managed. Now, there's always a lot of controversy about some of these certifications, that there's corruption. Da, da, da. I believe that. Um, but it's still good that they're certified. You know, we, as I say, we're all doing the best we can. Oh, let's go back to, okay, paint. You want to look for low VOC paints, which means volatile organic compounds. Um, VOCs are very toxic. And these compounds, when you paint the wall with a paint that is very high in VOCs, you know how you smell that strong paint smell? Well, that's called off-gassing. Now, when that paint, when that smell dissipates, you think it's safe to sleep in the room, right? That's how I was raised. Same thing with carpets. Well, it's not because the gases never stop emitting. They will always be there. They will never go away. So you want to buy things that have low VOCs. And one paint company that I really like is Sparrow and Ball because they have very low VOCs and it's a very ethical company. So especially in a child's room, remember the fragile population, 
You want to make sure that everything you put in a nursery and a child's room, and of course for yourself too, you have to take care of yourself, but especially for the fragile population that you use things that have as few chemicals as possible. It's going to be very tough to make it 100% chemical free, but you want to do your best. And by listening to a webinar like this, hopefully you're getting some really good tips. So low VOCs in your paints. Now, there is a paint that's becoming more popular. It's called lime paint. Lime paint is what they used in Europe, and it has that translucent kind of messy look. I find it very beautiful. So if you're handy, you know, you might give it a shot. And that is a completely non-toxic paint. And it's a look. I like the look, but it's definitely a look. And it's something that the average painter is going to look at you and say, huh, lime paint? But give it a shot. Sheets. This is one of my favorite pictures, by the way. Every time I look at it, I just, ugh. Sheets. Do not buy wrinkle-free sheets. They contain formaldehyde, and that's why they are wrinkle-free, and that formaldehyde will never leave the sheets. That's why they will always be wrinkle-free. So don't do that. It's super dangerous. You're wrapping yourself at night. Your body's warm from sleep. Your body's repairing itself at night, and yet you're wrapping yourself in formaldehyde. Also, be careful with printed sheets because it's kind of like the organic apple that I like to bring up a lot as an example. Um, you can, an apple can be organic from a farm, but yet if they put dye number two on it to make it red and sell beautifully, is it really organic? It's the same thing with printed sheets. You can have a set of sheets that are maybe got certified or Ocotec certified. And then another company can take those sheets and they can use dye that's extremely toxic. So is it still non-toxic? No. So really be careful and really watch and, and look, become, become a, a little detective. Mattresses. I love talking about mattresses. Um, over 50% of Americans have an illness. 50%. We are a very sick society. And we spend a third of our life in bed about. Our mattresses are key to our health. Do not use wool. I do not promote wool because many mattresses are wool and clearly it's not vegan and, and a lot of wool contains pesticides. Well, all wool contains pesticides because it's from an animal. Make sure that the, the mattress is not only vegan, but that it's also non-toxic. Many vegan mattresses are made with toxic chemicals. So again, it's sort of the same thing with the vegan and cruelty-free. You know, buyer beware. You have to really become your own advocate. So don't think because you see the word vegan, it's great. Just like don't think if you see the word organic, it's great. It can still have chemicals. So you have to make sure that the mattresses are made without harmful chemicals. Now, let's talk about crib mattresses. Um, Naturepedic is a company that we really love. And the founder of Naturepedic is a gentleman named Barry Chick. And Barry has really taught us a lot about mattresses. And he has asked me, he said, Deb, whenever you're on any of these webinars, can you just let people know something not to buy an organic latex crib mattress? And people say, why, why can't we do that? Because latex is something that many people are allergic to, correct? balloons, gloves, and you don't know if you have that allergy typically till you're older. An infant, you don't know if your infant is allergic to latex. So even though organic latex is fine for adults, it can be very, very dangerous for an infant. And what's sad is that they're completely legal to sell. Many companies promote organic latex crib mattresses. So please don't buy an organic uh, latex mattress for babies. And if Barry is watching, I spread the message, Barry, because it really is very important and it's an education. And as he says, he kind of relates it to, well, you know, a lot of people will say, well, the latex is under the casing of the mattress. So why is this still dangerous for the baby? And as he uses as an example, well, if you had a mattress that was under the casing was filled with poison ivy, would you still want to sleep in that mattress? No, you wouldn't. So please, no organic natural latex crib mattresses for babies, okay? And of course, make sure the mattresses are GOT certified, the crib mattresses. And also, if you are using an adult mattress, make sure it's what's called GAL certified, which is Global Organic Latex Standard. Just like um, GOTS, it's GALS. Okay. 
Oh, and before we talk about wool a little bit, let's talk about bed pillows. You do not want to use down. Down is also has feathers are highly toxic. They're filled with pesticides and they're very, very allergic. Um, there is actually a lung condition called feather duvet lung. It's the strangest sounding um, ailment, but uh, many people that are allergic to down, they develop scarring in their lungs. So um, there's no need also to use um, feathers at all. Again, we've evolved. There's so many wonderful alternatives such as Kapok, buckwheat. So now talking about blankets and wool, stay away from wool blankets. They hold moisture and they stain easily. So to me, they're not durable. And plus, again, it's an animal. Wool is loaded with pesticides, just loaded with them. And it is such a horrible industry like all the other, all the other animal-based industries. And what really annoys me about wool is the responsible wool standard. Do not, that does not exist, please. I have it even written here and we're gonna repeat it. There is no such thing as responsible wool, leather, down, fur, or any product that is from a living being. The term responsible is a marketing tactic only. Don't believe it for a second. Please, if there's anything that you take away from this webinar, it is that there is no such thing as responsible wool. Working conditions in fur and alligator farms are dangerous and filled with disease. Workers are at great risk. So again, it's not just about the animal or the child, it's the workers, the adult workers, the child workers. It's impossible, which I said before, but I'm gonna repeat it. It's an impossible to treat an animal humanely when that animal is considered an object for profit and not only as a living, breathing, intelligent being that can feel pain, fright, hunger, and seek to protect is young. So please keep this page in your brain. Fur, faux fur. Do not trust any label that says faux fur. There are so many stores and corporations that have been busted selling real fur as faux. Why? Because guess what? Real fur is cheaper because look how they treat these animals. So the way to tell if fur is real or not is kind of like thinking about the hair on your head. If you have hair on your head, fortunate enough to have hair on your head. When you have hair on your head, you know, you, you, when you pull it apart, it looks like it's, it's stuck to a skin. Same thing with real fur. Faux fur actually looks sewn in. So that's a really, that's a, a trick to tell. Okay, now rugs. Here's another video I did on rugs. Again, it's very short, but I think it gets to the point. And you know, it's just a different angle of me in a black turtleneck. Let's talk rugs. Um, buying a rug is a really big decision for a space um, because it's a very visual feature. And um, I'm gonna give you guys a few guidelines to think about when purchasing an area rug. Number one, don't use wool. This is the ugliest sample I could possibly find of a wool rug. And um, wool is extremely unethical. It is a fabric that is also loaded with pesticides and uh, the sheep suffer, the workers suffer. There is no such thing as responsible wool, so please do not believe it. You can see Luca is so upset by this conversation, he turned his back on me. Um, so here's the ugliest sample, so I hope we never buy wool rug. Okay, moving on. We have polyester, non-animal based. Polyester is really soft. It's not as durable as nylon. I actually have used this rug quite a bit for client spaces like bedrooms because it's really cushy, really soft, but not as durable when it comes to dirt. Nylon is awesome. I use nylon a lot in a lot of spaces uh, that are very, very busy, families, uh, beachy areas, you know, country homes, because it's a durable, durable rug and it picks up dirt easily and it's pretty. And they, now the thing is with nylon and polyester rugs, you don't have the availability of all those beautiful colors and patterns that you would have with wool rugs. So you just have to be a little creative. And I don't mind that. I don't mind having a neutral palette for a rug because then I can go crazy with my fabric selections, which I'll show you in a second. But there's one other type of non-animal based rug that I use in dining rooms typically because it's a bit of a fancier look or a living room that's not used a lot. And that is called tensile. Tensile is made from bamboo. And here's another tensile. It has a very shiny look to it. It has a very rich, almost silk-like look, but you're not using silkworms. 
So you have tensile, you have polyester, which is soft and cushy, not as durable, and then you have nylon. Now, so I have this, this basic nylon rug. What do I do with the space if I want to add tons of energy and color? What's great is it's a neutral palette. I can add any fabric, anything, anything will go with it. You can have so much fun with your fabrics. There you have it. Okay. So um, talking about rugs for children, same thing. Remember toddlers, infants, you're on the floor with them a lot. They're crawling on the floor a lot. So the rugs that you choose, try to use some, I mean, ideally for a child's room and a toddler's room, I would always suggest to a client to buy an organic cotton rug. Yes, it's not durable at all, but guess what? That rug is going to be spit upon any kind of liquid. And you know what I'm talking about? It's going to be thrown on that rug from a baby. So get an inexpensive organic cotton rug. It's soft. It's not durable, but it's not, it's not dangerous. And in a year or two, you throw it out and get another one. Because remember that baby is going to be on the floor a lot and they're gonna have their face. And as we know, babies put everything in their mouths. So they're gonna be mouthing the carpet. So that's my suggestion, throwing in my two cents there. Now, um, just to mention something for anyone out there who has a child or if they're an adult with any kind of um, sensory issues, such as the spectrum of autism or sensory pervasive uh, disorder, um, sensory processing um, issues where they're hypersensitive to touches, to textures, to smells, to sounds. You know, I have a special place in my heart. I love designing spaces for people in the spectrum of autism and those with sensory issues. And so clearly, um, going cruelty-free and non-toxic in your spaces is just essential for this population because they are so hypersensitive to their environment. And I always say that we are all sensitive. We're all sensory beings. But for a child with autism, for example, you know, if I have a tag on the back of my neck for my shirt, it's annoying to me. But for a child with autism, it can be painful. So Think about that if you have someone near to you or a, a space that you need to design or create for someone in who has any kind of sensory sensitivities, be careful about what you choose. Go non-animal based and non-toxic. Um, okay, now these are just some quantities for you just because we're gonna talk about now how to approach it in an easy manner. So if you get lazy and you think, oh, this is good, there were a couple of tips, but you know what, I'll start it next year. I want to hit you now with the guilt. Um, it takes about 12 ducks live plucked for one standard pillow. Live plucked, okay? Eight cows or calves for one average sofa to sit our tush on. Eight cows. Five sheep horrifically sheared three times for an area rug. And I don't know if you know about mule sing, but it still exists. Mule sing is when um, they're, what they're doing now is they're breeding sheep to be so large, merino wool, that they barely can walk and their, their fur is so thick that they, the maggots um, sit in there and start eating away the flesh of the sheep and it's called fly strike. So the wonderfully compassionate farmers or the owners of, the, of these huge global corporations started um, a process called mule sing. It's a procedure where they basically just cut out the hinds, the skin by the butt area and the legs without any anesthesia. Many of the sheep die a horrific death from infection and pain and shock. And um, what happens is scar tissue develops in that area. So there's no fur. So the sheep are just a number. So now they have less, what they call them downers. So muesling does exist. Another reason not to buy wool. 80 mink skins for the average throw and a hundred rabbits for the average throw as well. Okay, so I just had to put that in there. So cleaning products kind of like the apple, right? You know, you buy this organic apple and then you put dye on it. You've just ruined the apple. Same thing. You're buying all your furniture and decor and you're being so careful to go non-toxic and non-animal based. And yet you're going to start to clean everything with Clorox. So here you are in the nursery cleaning the crib with a Clorox based product when a, a baby is mouthing that crib. Um, so we love Dr. Bronner's. Um, in the course, we actually got, got the uh, privilege of interviewing Lisa Bronner from Dr. Bronner's Soaps. They are an ethical company. 
They, their products are completely non-toxic. I use them in my own home. I recommend them for every client. So use a product like Dr. Bronner's non-toxic. You don't want to rewind all the beautiful work that you're trying to do in your space by using the wrong cleaning products. So that's the ones that we love um, personally. Also, what I love about Dr. Brown is just like what I love about Naturopedic and Bowl and Farrell and a whole bunch of other um, Farrell and Bowl, a whole bunch of other companies is that they really think about, they go, they go another layer. Dr. Bronner's, um, they use palm oil, but they only use palm oil because they have their own farms of palm oil trees. Not like in the Amazon now where they're, where I don't buy palm oil products typically because it's destroying the orangutan population. But Dr. Bronner's, they realized that they needed palm oil, so they had their own farms and they're also now giving lots of work to people that need it in these countries. So that's a company that we love. Just use something that's completely non-toxic, completely, completely non-toxic on your furniture and decor. So, well, that's me ending. Okay, so how to start without getting overwhelmed. I say pick five, it's such a good number. You can either pick five things in your entire space that you're going to change out to be non-toxic and non-animal based, or you can pick a category. You can say, I'm going to get rid of all the down in my house. So you have to pick five things with down and get rid of them. And you have to set a date because a goal without a date is just a dream. As my mother says, and my mother's always right with these things. And it's true. So pick a date. Don't just say, I'm going to do it. Pick a date to do it and put it on the wall. And then it's stuck. And think of my mother. Um, also recycling. People always ask me about recycling. I have a leather sofa. What do I do? I have a wool rug. Should I throw it out? Never throw it out because that's terrible. You're just adding to all the toxicity and all the destruction of the world and the animals and everything. Keep it and use it and maybe be creative. Someone once told me that they had a leather um, pillowcase cover. So I said, you know what? You should put a really funny, um, uh, like put a patch on it that say, says like never again or say something or not funny, just something. Be creative. So don't get rid of the things, please. Um, and speaking of recycling with children, be aware and be, be wary of things that friends and family want to give you when you have a new baby in the house. They might want to give you an old crib that they have. Remember, um, regulations, there were very little regulations years ago when it came to toxicity. So be careful when you bring things in, especially into a child's space, that they could still be extremely toxic and very dangerous, especially if they lick and touch them. And if you can't decide in which area of your space to go uh, to start, as I mentioned to me, the bedroom is one of the most important spaces because it's really where you know, we keep ourselves, we, we repair our body while we're sleeping. And so I think the bedroom is a really, really good place to start. And that, 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 I think that it's in, I'm going to stop the share. And here we go. I hope I didn't uh, just concern the people. Okay. We would watch again later. Okay. Hold on. So do we have any questions? Any questions? Sometimes animal sanctuary is very good, Vanessa. Sometimes animal sanctuaries can use rugs for rescued animals. That's a great idea. So if you wanna recycle, yeah, that's, that's really wonderful. You know, recycle and donate to places that really need things. Speaking of that, like I know a lot of shelters, they want old chairs, old upholstered chairs to put into the cages for the dogs and the cats. So yeah, that's a really good, what do I think about a uh, he, of silk? You know what? I don't know what that is. Can you get, tell me a bit about what it is? If it's a silk from worms, then I, it's a silk from worms. So look, I don't, I don't um, promote boiling worms, silkworms. They're also a living creature. One second. Oh, you're getting it fun. Well, if anyone has any other questions, I mean, I'm just gonna wait a couple minutes. You know, we're having, um, I'm having a hard time getting rid of two silk covered pillows. They're beautiful, but I know they came from suffering. Well, that's a personal decision. And you know, I always say, 
I believe like everyone on this call, you're doing better than most. And clearly your heart is in the right place and you should feel good about that. And just by you being on this call shows that you want to make change. You want to help animals. You want to help the world. You want to help children. You want to help your family and you want to stay healthy. Um, so yes, silk covers do come from suffering. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you could perhaps do with something that, that Vanessa said, you could donate it to somewhere, to a sanctuary, perhaps a shelter, a women's shelter or something. I had to join late by any chance. Will there be a replay of this video? Yes, I will be sending out a replay to everyone, to everyone who signed up. I have your email and I'll be sending you out uh, most likely tomorrow or within a day or two, hopefully, but you will definitely get a replay of this video. Great, I'm glad you liked it. Um, so we are having a virtual consult winner announcement. So I am just picking a name and I'm picking Vanessa Ray. Vanessa, you just won an online consult with me. How's that? You have to respond and say, great, I do, I'm marrying you. Great, love, okay, congratulations. <laughs> um, are there any other questions? What store, hold on, would I suggest to shop for vegan interiors? Hmm, okay. That's a toughie because there is no one store. There is no one store that says we sell only vegan interiors. Most companies, online companies will have vegan items. If you go to our shop, okay, our Amazon shop on um, not only Amazon, we actually have, we have mood boards. If you go to Demer Design, uh, when I send out the email, when you go to Demer Design, we actually have mood boards and everything is completely vegan. We have a shop on vegandesign.org. Everything is completely vegan. The shop, most of the things are from Amazon. And I know a lot of people don't like shopping from Amazon, which I get. So if you go to Demer Design, we have some great mood boards for you to take a look at. I'm going to talk about my courses now. Thank you, Lisa, for reminding me. Um, so I am giving to everyone who attended this webinar and who missed it, who signed up, 50% off of our vegan and non-toxic nursery and kids room design course. And I have to tell you, I think the course is phenomenal. I love it. We have awesome experts. I teach you all my little hidden ways that I design spaces, all my weird non-techy ways. 50% um, off that and 50% off our vegan design course, which is also terrific. So I am going to send that out in the email as well. So please look out tomorrow for an email with the thank you email from me. It will have those links. It will have the course, the coupon code, which is farm 50 off, but I'll send it in the email as well. And please also, um, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, I'm actually going to send one big salesman kind of email that has our Facebook link, our YouTube subscribe, the coupon codes, and a whole bunch of stuff for you. Uh, what are important questions to ask when trying to figure out if a home decor is non-toxic, vegan when shopping from a store or website? You know what, Vanessa, you have to learn to read labels. The first thing is see if it has any certifications. If it has a GOT certified label, you're in the money. You don't need to do anything else. If it has an Okatex certified label, which is spelled really weird, it's O-K-E-O, -E like OK, Okatex certified label, that's pretty good too. If it has no labels, it has no certifications, look at the label, really look at the label. And if you still, yes, I, and if you still, if you still do not know, you have to contact the manufacturer. Most salespeople do not know what is going on with a the product. They look at you like a deer caught in the headlights because they've never been asked these questions before. And of course you can always email us and we can help you. We love searching. We have a really good Facebook group that I would love for you guys to join. It's, um, I'm wondering how, if I can send it, it's called Design for a Healthy and Humane Home. I'm gonna send it in the email tomorrow. Um, I don't know if I can actually, if I put it in the chat, but you guys don't see the chat. So that's not gonna work. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you so much, Vidya. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Can you guys see one another's um, texts? I never know. No, that's what I didn't think. Okay. So um, any other questions? I'm trying to think this. Please tell me what I thought. Thoughts on VOC chalk paint. That's no, oh yes, that's wonderful. The no, anything no VOC, volatile organic compounds. It's awesome. 
So just try to find things because remember, you don't want any off gassing. Off gassing is terrible and it doesn't go away. Again, I keep repeating the same, like there's certain points that I'm just going to keep repeating. Off gassing stays forever. Um, okay, anything else? What do I think about silk? I'm just looking at all the questions. I think, are there any other questions? If not, again, I want to thank Eric. Thank you so much for giving me this platform. I really appreciate it. Do you have any suggestions for cruelty-free glue for wallpaper? A home is very old, some walls repair. Uh-huh. For glue, I do. if you go on our Amazon shop on vegandesign.org, I think we have a glue or two on there because it's been tough. It's tough finding glues that are non-toxic. And I can't honestly say that I know if they're good or not, because we haven't used them yet, but there are some on there. Yeah, glue is a great question. It's something that I'm going to get an answer for you guys on. It's the same thing with wall, you know, off oh, wallpaper. Um, same thing for wallpaper, right? The kind of glue for wallpaper. Because they have plaster will require wallpaper. Again, you know, I think with wallpaper, you want to, um, did I touch upon wallpaper with you guys? I didn't. Same thing, wallpaper, treat wallpaper like paint. Um, you want to look for things that have no VOCs. You want to look for water-based um, print on it. Um, and you want to look for things that really are not flame retardant because even though they've changed the laws, a lot of the things that they've replaced them with are still super toxic. Any suggestions? I'm a lover of Farron Bowl. I think they're a great paint company and their paints are non-toxic. They're more money, but they're worth it. Any other questions? Guys, this was so much fun. I have a similar question. If you get vegan materials for home renovation, you need it for people that are renovating the home that are not that are non-vegan. Remember, it's very hard to find paints that are completely vegan. There's one or two companies out there. There's small companies. We've tried reaching out to them a million times and they've never gotten back to us. Um, nowadays, some, I mean, some paints contain casein, which is from a cow. Um, so it's still hard to find paints that are completely vegan. Um, but non and for as far as materials, you want to look for things that have the, the uh, standards, the GOTS, the Ocutex. Ocutex standards can be used in materials, rugs, things like that, maybe some wood products. And if you're installing, for example, wood floors, and you're installing a raw walnut, for example, have, get it raw, and then you can have it finished with just a wax, which is non-toxic. If you get a backsplash, other adhesive tools to look out to avoid. I don't have the answer to that yet because so far I have not been able to honestly say we love these adhesives, we love these glues because we still don't know how they how durable they are and how they wear. And the other issue you have sometimes is with products like this, the average builder or contractor is not comfortable using them because they've never used these kinds of products before, which is, you know, something that you would have to push. But that's another layer that we really want to explore more about building materials and remodeling. Have you any experience with mushroom or pineapple leather? Same thing. P mushroom leather, we haven't been able to get a sample yet. They've been doing a lot of it out in Italy and it looks fantastic um, because it looks like if anyone doesn't know, mushroom leather looks like a real leather and they grow it um, just like a mushroom grows. That's how they grow it. Pineapple leather, we got a sample of, and it feels like a Brillo pad. Pineapple leather is made from the strands of pineapple leaves. It's a whole process. Um, and it's a wonderful product to think about the sustainability of it and the ethics of it. You know, it's a very safe environment for the workers as well, but it feels like Brillo. I would use it only, for example, on window treatments, something like that. I would never do at this point a sofa made with pineapple leather or pillows because it's just like a Brillo pad. But hopefully as time goes by, they will be able to fix that issue. But for now, you can use it on things that you don't have to press up against. The woman in got, get paid, I think it comes from Hinduism. It means more or less cruelty-free. The woman in gets paid for gets paid for Hamiza. Oh, you're talking about that. Uh-huh, well, uh, talking about the silk. Um, 
I don't know, you'd have to look into that. If it's a live worm, they're boiled. That's how they make silk. So that's all I know. So prove me wrong, that would be awesome because then that's another product we can promote. Yes, Pina Tex is what pineapple leather is called. Thanks, Vanessa. Anything else, guys? What about apple leather? Same thing. Apple leather, I haven't gotten a sample of, but a lot of these things, you know, it's, it's a good point, like cactus leather. They're coming out with cactus leather and apple leather. They're toxic. They're still very, very toxic because they're treated. So you have to be careful. It's still on the horizon. It's called biofabrication, really, which is, you know, growing materials. That's what it means. And so there's mushroom leather making also leather made from the grape rinds from wine in Italy. They're making all different kinds of leathers from, from fruits and vegetables. They're also making them in labs. Um, Modern Meadow is one company that's very, very large in New Jersey, and they're making a uh, cultured leather in labs. So um, it's all on the horizon. And to me, it's the future and it's very exciting. What kind of, that kind of silk is, um, from, allegedly from, is allegedly made from naturally shed silk, not boiling the worm. I'm very curious about your opinion. Vegan spider silk. No, because spider silk is still made from spiders. It's kind of the same thing from mom. Um, there's another silk that they're making from the ocean from fish, like fish scales I read about, but it's still from the animal. Is it more toxic than polyurethane? It, what is more toxic than polyurethane? Polyurethane is toxic, polyester is toxic, nylon's toxic, but we still use nylons. Like I use nylons because when I need to do carpets for clients, I won't use wool. So I'll use a nylon or I'll use a poly. Apple mushroom, et cetera. We don't know yet because it's still too new with the, with the, um, the fruits and vegetable leathers with biofabrication. They are toxic. I mean, I don't think there's one that they've made so far that is not toxic because I think it's the same thing. It's kind of like, bamboo you know bamboo is they have to you know they have to treat it you know right but i'm curious to see how what the future holds for that i i think it's wonderful that they don't have to kill animals again it's unnecessary <laughs> 